Hello everyone, this is Jasmina, and in this video I am going to talk about the Dragon Virtue days and the instruction for this. And actually the Dragon Virtue is a sector, not a day. Uh, but the Dragon Virtue is one of those four noble stars that I promised to talk about, and it is a subsector within your residence that changes every year, and this could also be your office, your office building or whatever, but most of the time it's easier in your residence. A Dragon Virtue Day is a good day to help you overcome obstacles in your path to your goals. And even though it's a sector, you there are certain days where it is more much more powerful than other days. And those are the days you should use. And I will be talking about that here. Manifesting is always safe on the day, even if you are clashing with the day. That is one of your four pillars, the animal signs there, clashes with the day. Uh, it's okay. Um, it's not as effective. You may have to work a little harder, but manifesting will never hurt. Activating can, though. So if it is a clash, it won't be as effective, but depending on how urgent the need is, it may still be worth your time because it may take a while before the next day shows up. Activating a subsector is safe if it's not in an annual affliction area and doesn't have untimely stars and is not a day that's clashing with you. But it, that's a particular day, but that subsector is safe to activate as long as you don't have any of these untimely stars. Now there's annual untimely stars, and then you've got some in your house's feng shui chart, and I mean, sorry, flying star chart, and uh, you also have some in the purple white. So there's things that you need to know about your house. Um, to do this well. And the purple white chart changes every year, so it's a little more difficult. But if you don't have any problem stars there, for example, if you have an activated special formation in your flying star chart, uh, you don't have to worry about that. And you can even have a, an activated special formation, actually it's automatically activated in your purple white chart. If you have both, you only need to worry about the annual stars. And this is why feng shui practitioners really like to have a house that has these these uh, good um, uh, these two good things, having uh, a special formation in both the flying stars and in the purple white. But they're not that easy to come by. So sometimes you have to sacrifice something, but you can still manifest no matter what, and that's safe. Now activations, physical activations of water or fire, which are the two activating elements, they should be there for a two week maximum. Uh, and that is because you're activating this particular energy. It's not like a permanent thing. So the location of the dragon virtue depends on the year branch. So if uh, we are living in a rat year, the subsector would be southwest one and so forth. So what is this year? This year, 2024, it's a dragon year. So this northwest one, uh, northwest three, which is the pig subsector, this is the one you want to activate on a good day. And I'll talk about that in a second. So this year, northwest three is clear of all annual afflictions and therefore it can be activated safely as long as you don't have untimely stars in the Northwest. The dragon virtue can be activated on any generally good date selection day, but there's, uh, there is a slight preference. Uh, at least some people have a slight preference or some practitioners, but you still have to avoid your clash days. That is, to the day you're doing the man or you're doing either the manifestation or the activation, you don't want to do it on a clash day, and you want to avoid snake days because Northwest Three is in the pig sector, so it's just a little safer to uh, to pass on snake days. I since it is a dragon year, uh, the dog days also might not be as effective because they're clashing with the year, but it's doable. It's usable, let's put it that way. You want to manifest and maybe not place uh, any, any kind of activation, though. 
Now the dates that class the 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 dates that clash with the month's animal that is the day clashes with the month they that is, they may also be weakened a bit. So in a dragon month, a dog day kind of has a double whammy. So uh, that probably is not a very effective day. So uh, from from what I've read in on the Chinese websites, uh, the 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 best yellow and black belt to use to activate the dragon virtue is a green dragon day. Um, and but if you have other good entities that day, so much the better. So you can look at the other forms of, of um, date selection to look at that too. Or you can just order that thing from S Metaphysics and, and it will tell you where the green da dragon days are and, and what all the stuff is. So, you know, your dong gong and all that stuff. So here is the table that will tell you where it appears. And this is a Chinese solar month. So it really starts with tiger, that's in February. And then this is uh, six months later. And um, those are the rat days. The rat days are the day you have the green dragon. So, uh, and uh, then, so in April, we are in um, the dragon month and it'll be on a dragon day. And since we're in the year of the dragon, that's, you know, it's okay. It's, um, uh, it's not clashing. It's kind of, it might be quite strong this, uh, this particular time. Now, when it comes to the dog month, this does clash. And so this might not be quite as good, but that dog month is, you know, six months from now. It's, uh, I guess in, uh, in November. So, that maybe in November it's not such even these good days are only so so. Now, in general, activations in a subsector, clear of annual afflictions or untimely stars still should not be there more than two weeks because it's a special purpose thing. It's not a permanent thing. There are many times that activations may conflict with the direct and indirect spirit locations. But that is why we just limit it to two weeks so that you don't have to worry about this. Now, this is the direct and indirect spirits for the, the sectors uh, for period nine. So uh, northwest, west, northeast and south, uh, that is where you would use um, fire in general. It's a little safer to activate with fire. Uh, but you also do want to look at the stars, especially the annual stars that are there and in your house too. Sometimes it doesn't work too well. It is, this is part of the art of figuring out what to use. It does take some thinking. But in general, you would use a fire activation, which is a candle. And then you light it for like 10 minutes and you turn on a salt lamp before you blow out the candle. And, uh, and then you just leave the salt lamp on for two weeks. The indirect spirit is, uh, are located in the sectors southeast, east, southwest, and north. And, um, and there you would want to use water in general, especially if it's going to be long term. Uh, and, if, and if it does, if the sectors do correspond well with the... Um, with the direct and indirect spirit, you know, you can leave it for more than two weeks because it can keep, keep activating. But th this is something you have to be careful about. I mean, you, you have to really know where your sectors are and what can be there. Now, if you have a mountain in an indirect spirit location that automatically will activate the stars and the energy in whatever sectors you have here, including um, including the purple white. And if you have water, uh, like a, especially a natural lake or a natural pond, you're, you're good. And, and in these sectors, it will activate those sectors stars and the, and it will really activate the facing star. And here, this tends to activate the sitting star. So the mountains must come from nature. 
And if you have a mountain, let's say in period nine, you have a mountain in the east, it's okay. Mountains can never hurt you. If it's not in the direct spirit location, a mountain just won't activate anything. So if you had a mountain in the east, it's not going to activate the east uh, sector, not in period nine. If it's man-made water, you don't want to put a permanent man-made water in these sectors. In fact, you never want to have a permanent uh, man-made water. But since it's man-made, you can unmake it. But if it's from nature, it doesn't hurt you. Anything from nature cannot hurt you. It just doesn't activate anything. So that is something you need to be cognizant of. So if you have, you can have water in the east, and that's fine. You can have water in any of those, any of these sectors, and that's fine. But come period one, these sectors are going to flip. So what's here will come over here, and what's here will come over here. So uh, that means if you have a man-made structure, let's say you put water in the east, well, come period one, which is 2044, you um, may want to fill that in. Um, but if that water is put there to activate a special formation, it can stay. For example, if your house face, this is a period nine house faces east, you have a mountain, you can, you, you then um, will have a, in period nine, you'll have a seven star robbery possible. If you have a mountain, a natural, you know, mountain, that will activate the sitting star. And if you place water there, you activate the facing star. And they're both good stars. Um, once you activate it, you have a permanently good uh, forever uh, formation. Of course, you have to be careful that you don't mess up the period. But if it's not there to activate a special formation, you should move it. If it's just there because you like it, you do need to move it. So that's basically it. I'd like to thank you for watching. Please feel free to contact me here or leave a comment if you have any questions. And uh, that is basically it. It's, um, it's an interesting formation. Again, it removes problems, obstacles to get you where you want to go. So this is a very powerful uh, day and location. Thank you for watching.